Welcome back, everyone, to a new The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Now that I am done with SMGs, I've moved on to Sniper Rifles. Um, sniper Rifles is a category I wasn't the most happy with with Borderlands, the pre-sequel, because they didn't really bring anything new and exciting to them, and that's going to kind of be repeated throughout this. There's a few, but not many. So I'm starting here with Doll. I'm just kind of going in vendor order, I guess. Doll snipers are known for their burst fire and uh, solid stats overall. When you have a doll stock, you get an extra burst, uh, extra round in the burst. It's not the grip that does it, it is the stock. So here with a typical doll sniper, you have a six round burst. That last one really kicks. Uh, without a doll stock, you would have a five round burst. So they do go through quite a bit of ammo. Now, moving on to the actual red text, we start with the pitchfork. The pitchfork was a gun we had in Borderlands 2, and it is back for Borderlands the pre sequel. Well, the pitchfork only has one listed pellet, and stat wise, it looks like it has less damage, higher accuracy, and a bigger mag. All that's kind of not true. Uh, it has unlisted pellets, so the damage is actually way up. It takes two ammo per shot, so there's actually only technically nine shots in the mag compared to the 12 on a regular. And the accuracy, while it's higher, you have a spread, so it's kind of less accurate. Uh, I guess I'll shoot up here. So you can see there, you get five pellets per shot for the cost of two ammo. Which isn't a bad turnout, but in a burst, and while that stays a pretty solid burst, you're not going to really hit most enemies with all of that, and that just costs 10 ammo. And when your ammo count here is 132, that's not a lot of shots, or a lot of burst, I should say. So while this thing has a ridiculous amount of damage, well there you only saw a 3 round burst. You don't really fully hit with a lot of the pellets. You can see there, he was only hit with the center ones, and then the outside ones were hitting the wall behind him. Now on loaders, it's usually better, because you can kind of go here and hit more, but this guy doesn't have crits on him. Uh, this is kind of a boss basher gun. It, it's too ammo -y f inefficient run out of money soon to uh really use it for main gameplay now if you can negate ammo use like jack and uh, athena can then there's something to it but uh it's really reserved for those big bosses and with those it can do a ridiculous amount of damage kind of not not a whole lot competes with it the sad thing is it's pretty much the same thing as we had in borderlands 2 now the next one is the wet week now, the wet week is blue, not purple, so you compare it to a different gun. Uh, compared to its purple counterpart, you have drastically increased damage and uh, increased accuracy. Compared to the purple gun, you still have drastically increased uh, damage and pretty nice accuracy, but you lose one in the mag. The other difference with the wet week, uh, I guess I'll shoot this first. So notice 11 in the mag. That's still a six round burst for a blue. The wet week. Let's do that one more time. 11 down to seven is a four round burst. With a doll stock, three bursts without it. So it's a lot more ammo efficient losing uh, all those extra shots. You know, a four round compared to a six or a five to a three, that's a lot less. And with its increased damage, it's still going to put out. I wonder how much I should have done the math on that. 42,000 four times versus 28,000 six times. It probably puts out similar damage in the burst using two less ammo. And that's a pretty big deal. Making it an incredibly efficient, good sniper. Now, it does have slower bullet speed. But uh, there you can kind of see it. 
So you do have to compensate for that bullet speed. But it's not terrible bullet speed, at least in my opinion. I haven't had huge issues with it. And there are some characters that can increase bullet speed to negate that. Or with the use of cryo holding enemies still. Or with... Uh, I guess there's no real phase lock in this game like Maya. Um, but with like crowd control or stunning... Uh, quasars and singularities kind of hold enemies still. There are ways around that burst. Now, the wet week was a uh, gun added by the shift code, and while this is a really cool gun I like, it is pretty much the sloth from Borderlands 2. So, neither one of these guns are new snipers. Now, Borderlands 2 was pretty, I think, famous for its sniping. Maybe not famous, but, uh,. Borderlands 2 had a lot of really interesting snipers, and with Zero as a sniper character, they really nailed the sniping in that game. Uh, you had guns like the Pimpernel, you know, the Pitchfork was at least new in that game. Uh, the Godfinger is incredibly interesting, whether or not you find it effective. Uh, obviously, the Liuta was a fantastic sniper. There, there was a lot of interesting snipers in Borderlands 2 and fun snipers to use. Uh, you know, the Skull Masher came back kind of from Borderlands 1, uh, the Morning Star, the Invader. And while well, some of these came back for the pre sequel, there, there wasn't a lot new in the pre sequel for snipers. And, you know, in the coming uh, week, week and a half, it takes me to cover all the snipers. Uh, you guys are to see that and I'm gonna be kind of down on these um, so as far as fixing these there's really not much to fix both these guns are really good and kind of spot-on you know the pitchfork it has a lot of ammo consumption but it shoots out five bullets per a shot and they're unlisted so it, it should two bullets for that isn't a bad deal um, so there isn't a whole lot I would change about the pitchfork it's it's just what it is you know it's not a gun for regular mobbing and stuff, it's a gun you bust out for a badass or a boss to put them down, and that's fine. It's kind of good that those guns exist. Uh, the Wet Week, I think, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, they've made the skin better, as you can see this, the reflections on the gun. Kind of that commerce skin, I think it's fantastic. And uh, it's just a really, really good sniper. It might be one of the best snipers in the game. I would definitely say so. And you see that 171k per shot. So I wouldn't really do much to change these two snipers. I just wish we had another doll sniper that has something unique to it rather than just two guns brought back from Borderlands 2. And that's really my main complaint in this one is there's nothing new. Just really a new skin and a new name. But two new, two of the same gun. So uh, sorry about being a bit salty in these, but uh, get ready for it because uh, I'm not going to be too happy with the rest of them either. Uh, snipers is a category that really aggravated me in this game because I love sniping in Borderlands 2 and we just didn't get many cool new snipers in this game. To make sniping exciting, it was like, alright, cool, let's use the Skull Masher again, or Snyder's again, or everything we've already had again. And there was some, there was some snipers that weren't great in Borderlands 2 that would have transitioned into this game better. Like the Storm, I'm going to get into that in the Mollywan one, which didn't work in Borderlands 2 that well, but would have been really good in this game. And they could have fixed some of those uh, kind of mediocre snipers and brought them back, but they, they didn't really do that and rebalance them. Uh, the other problem was that there was no sniping character in the vanilla game. We had to wait for the second DLC character that came out fairly late in the game's life cycle to get a sniper. And that also kind of hurt sniping in this game. So let me know what you think about all that. And since this is the first sniper video, just let me know what you think about sniping in the pre-sequel. That is it for now. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.